Congratulations on purchasing your brand new vehicle and joining the LH family of vehicles. The Chrysler Concorde, Dodge Intrepid, Eagle Vision, the Chrysler New Yorker, and the Chrysler LHS. It means a lot to us that you've selected a brand new vehicle manufactured by Chrysler Corporation, and we want to make sure that you understand how some of the most important features work. Some of these features may or may not be included with the particular vehicle you have purchased or the option level you've selected, but most of the procedures you're going to see will help you gain a better understanding of your car. So we urge you to watch the entire video. For your convenience, this video has been divided into four color-coded segments which may be located easily during fast forwarding. The popular features segment is preceded by a blue screen, the audio segment orange, maintenance yellow, and additional features green. The child restraint system operating instructions, for example, are found in the additional features segment. Simply fast forward until you see the green screen and the child restraint system subject will follow shortly. It's that simple. Once again, congratulations on joining the family of LH vehicles. Now sit back and enjoy the program. Your vehicle is equipped with a headlamp time delay feature designed to provide you with a little extra peace of mind while parking in dimly lit areas. You can activate the system by simply turning off the ignition before turning off the headlamp switch. The headlamps will remain illuminated for 90 seconds before turning themselves off. This system only affects the headlamps. The park and tail lamps will not be illuminated during the 90 second timeout period. If you do not wish to use the headlamp time delay, simply turn the headlamp switch off prior to the ignition switch. The headlamps will go out immediately. Two useful features that come equipped with some LH vehicles are the remote keyless and illuminated entry systems. The keyless entry system uses a handy transmitter to lock or unlock doors, open the trunk, and activate the illuminated entry system. To unlock the driver's door, press the unlock button once. Notice that the lights also turn on. To unlock all of the doors, press the unlock button twice within five seconds. Be sure that you make distinct presses so that the system doesn't get confused. To lock all doors, press the lock button one time. All doors will lock and the horn will chirp once. The interior lights will stay on for 30 seconds and then fade off. To open the trunk, press the trunk release button twice within a two second period. Again, make sure that you press the button distinctly. Power door locks are another convenience feature that are included on many LH vehicles. Your dealer can activate them to become speed sensitive and they'll automatically engage whenever you accelerate to speeds above 15 miles per hour. These speed sensitive power door locks only work with the transmission in gear and all the doors closed. Again, see your dealer for more details about this feature. Every LH vehicle comes with a standard rear door child protection lock system to provide a safer environment for small children. This safety feature prevents rear seat occupants from opening the doors from the inside. When safety locks are engaged, doors will only open from the outside. To engage the safety locks, simply open the rear doors and push this lever down. To disengage the lock and to permit the doors to open from the inside, simply lift the lever. The keyless entry transmitter may also be used to activate the optional vehicle theft security system that has been developed to protect your doors, trunk key cylinder, and ignition from unauthorized operation. Here's how it works. To automatically arm the system, simply lock your doors using any power feature, such as the power door lock switch or the keyless entry transmitter. The system will not be armed if you lock your doors manually. To disarm the system, unlock either the driver's or front passenger door with your key or use the keyless entry transmitter. Your security system also provides you with a visual indication of its status. A red LED located on top of the instrument panel will flash rapidly whenever you are arming your system and then will flash once every four seconds as a reminder. If the LED remains lit, it is a warning that the security system may not be working properly. If this occurs, please see your dealer for service. The system also alerts you whenever an illegal entry has occurred. The red LED will flash twice every second or so and when disarming, 
the horn will beep three times to let you know that the vehicle was tampered with while you were away. The optional anti-lock braking system known as ABS is designed to provide you with greater control of your vehicle, even in unfavorable braking circumstances. ABS prevents wheel lockup and provides the driver with maximum braking performance. By preventing wheel lockup, ABS helps the driver maintain traction, which improves steering control and directional stability. ABS works differently than conventional brakes by automatically pumping the brakes for you during severe braking conditions. So their performance takes a little bit of getting used to. But always remember that ABS works best when you let it do its job. Just press firmly on the brake pedal and let ABS do the pumping. You should never pump the pedal yourself because manual pumping makes ABS less effective. When ABS has been activated, it's normal to feel the brake pedal pulsate and to hear some associated system noise, so don't be alarmed. Just press the brake pedal down firmly and let ABS do the work. To ensure that the components of the system are operating safely, ABS performs a self-check. This occurs when your vehicle reaches about 7 miles per hour. At this time, the ABS makes a low humming sound. And if your foot is on the brake pedal, you may feel it vibrate and pulse. These sounds and sensations are a normal process when your ABS is checking itself for proper operation. If at any time the yellow ABS light on your dashboard remains lit, the system is warning you that it's not functioning properly and that you need to take your vehicle in for service. But don't worry, you will still be able to brake as if you were using conventional brakes. The traction control system has been engineered to reduce wheel slip and also automatically engage the brake on front driving wheels whenever they lose traction. The system operates at speeds below 25 miles per hour and is particularly helpful when accelerating on slippery surfaces. When traction control is activated, it's normal to hear some associated system noises. The traction control system always remains in the standby mode, ready to be activated whenever needed. When the traction control system is active, the green track control light illuminates. You should manually turn off the system if you find yourself stuck in the mud, ice, or snow so that you can rock your vehicle free. In this case, simply press the track control dashboard switch until track off appears on the message center. To turn the system back on, you will need to press the track control switch again and hold it until the lamp goes off. You should be aware that the traction control system will deactivate to prevent overheating after heavy use. If this happens, the track off light will appear and remain lit for approximately four minutes until the system cools. If the track off light remains on for an extended period, refer to the owner's manual. The park brake mechanism is especially convenient because you set and release it using only one piece of equipment, the park brake pedal. In other words, there's no release handle. To set the parking brake, press the pedal down toward the floor until you feel substantial resistance. The pedal remains set in this position until you release it. To release, firmly press the pedal further than its set position. It will then return to its original disengaged position. Now you're ready to go. The state-of-the-art transmission found in your LH vehicle includes a computer that has been pre-programmed at the factory to provide smooth and precise shifting. And over time, this fully adaptive electronic control gets even smarter and learns as you drive and adjusts itself to shift comfortably. This learning process may cover 1,000 miles worth of driving, but right from the start you'll notice a gradual improvement in the car's shift quality. An increasing number of LH drivers are learning to appreciate the freedom provided by their electronic speed control systems. The system is programmed to take over accelerator operation at speeds above 30 miles per hour. To activate your system, simply press the on-off button. Notice that the word cruise lights up in the instrument cluster. This means that the system is ready for operation. To turn the system off, press the on-off button again. With the system turned on, accelerate until you've reached your desired speed and then press the set coast button. You'll soon notice that your selected speed is being automatically maintained by the system. If at any time you decide to turn off the speed control and use the on-off button to do it, you will also erase the speed from the system memory. 
However, if you want to deactivate the speed control without erasing the set speed, simply tap the brake pedal or press the cancel button. Using the cancel button avoids sending unintended brake light signals to drivers following behind you. If you wish to resume the speed that you set earlier and you haven't erased the system memory, simply press and release the Resume Excel button. Keep in mind that resume can only be used at speeds above 25 miles per hour. If you want to increase your speed using the electronic speed control system, press and hold the Resume Excel button. When the button is released, the desired speed will be established. Tapping the Resume Excel button increases your speed incrementally. Each time the button is tapped, you'll increase your speed by 2 miles per hour. With the control system active, you can also use the accelerator to increase your speed and your set speed will remain in the system memory. That way, when you let up on the accelerator, the system takes over again and returns your car to the speed that was previously set. To decrease speed, press and hold the Set Coast button. When the button is released, a new speed will be established. Your electronic speed control system also comes complete with a feature that automatically turns the system off and erases the set speed from the system's memory when the ignition is turned off. This means that the speed control system must be turned back on and a new speed set the next time you take a drive. The speed control system also has a feature which will try to maintain vehicle speed going up and down hills. On steep inclines, the transmission may downshift from fourth to third gear and remain in third gear until the vehicle has crested the top of a hill. This reduces unexpected shifting. When going down a steep hill, the transmission may downshift from 4th to 3rd, helping to maintain your vehicle set speed. Available as part of the full overhead console and many overhead console systems is an overhead travel information system. In addition, the full overhead console provides two storage compartments, one for sunglass storage and another for a garage door opener. The travel information system displays information pertinent to the vehicle's operation, including vehicle direction, outside temperature, distance to empty, elapsed time, as well as average and instantaneous fuel economy information. Four buttons are provided to control the readout of the display. The first controls the units of measurement. Pressing this button switches the display from U.S. common to metric. The second button acts as a mode select stepping through the display sequence from mileage and fuel consumption data to time and distance readouts. The third button selects the compass and temperature features. The compass features are shown on the left and the temperature is shown on the right. The fourth button, when pressed while in specific display modes, clears and reinitializes the readout to again begin displaying information. The LH Automatic Temperature Control System, or ATC, is ingeniously designed to maintain a steady comfort level in various weather conditions. In most instances, you'll find that the ATC system does all the work for you. With the engine running, press the Auto button on the control pad, and then turn the temperature knob until you reach a comfortable setting. Just set the temperature and forget it. Now everything's set up automatically but you can still adjust the fan speed by turning this control clockwise to increase or counterclockwise to decrease the amount of forced air through the system. The fan speed is now in a full manual mode, but the temperature and the direction of the airflow will still be controlled automatically. While still in automatic, rather than adjusting the fan, you may choose to adjust the airflow direction. In this case, use the air direction buttons located on the right side of the control pad. Pressing these buttons allows you to redirect the airflow to specific outlets, but lets the system automatically regulate the fan speed in order to maintain your temperature setting. Keep in mind that if you adjust both fan speed and airflow direction, then the ATC system goes into a fully manual mode. You can easily return the system to automatic by simply pressing the Auto button once. The only exception is if the temperature is set at either its extreme hottest or coldest settings. In that case, reset the temperature at any middle setting and then press the Auto button one time. The optional automatic day-night mirror contains an auto dim feature that changes the sensitivity of the rear view mirror to accommodate headlight glare. During night use, headlights approaching from behind will automatically appear dimmed. 
During daylight, however, the mirror remains unaffected, allowing you to keep the auto-dim feature turned on at all times if you wish. The switch located at the bottom of the mirror is used to activate the auto-dim feature. It contains a green light that illuminates whenever auto-dim is turned on. If your car is equipped with power windows, the driver's window switch includes a one-touch auto-down feature that makes operation a breeze. To use it, push the auto button rearward until you feel that it's moved past the detent position, then release it. The window will open all the way and the window motor will automatically shut off. If you need to stop the window before it is completely open, simply move the auto button forward or backward and then release it. The window will stop moving immediately. You are also able to open the driver's window without using the auto down feature. Just pull the auto button rearward, but not all the way back, until the window starts moving. Then, to close the window, push the auto button forward from the center. The window will open or close as long as you continue to hold the button. Release the button and the window immediately stops. For an added measure of safety, the power windows may be temporarily disabled by activating the power window lock located on the driver's door. Simply press the lockout button and the green status light on each passenger window control will extinguish, indicating that all but the driver's window are locked out and may not be opened. Another important safety feature is adjustable shoulder belts that can be repositioned to accommodate people of different heights. To adjust the front seat belts, release the anchorage cover by pressing on it. Then move the anchorage up or down to the position that fits you best. To set this new position, simply release pressure. Then yank the belt up and down to make sure that it's been securely locked into the new position. To help promote cleaner air and improve the serviceability of your new vehicle, it has been equipped with a sophisticated onboard diagnostic system. This system continuously monitors virtually all aspects of your engine, transmission and emission controls to see that they are operating properly. When these systems are operating properly, your vehicle will give you top-level performance, optimum fuel economy, and environmentally clean driving, well within the requirements of current government emissions regulations. In the event that this onboard diagnostic system determines that your powertrain systems are not operating at peak efficiency, it will do two things. First, it will turn on the check engine light to alert you that you need to have your dealer check out your vehicle's operating systems. And second, it will store information in the vehicle's computer memory that will help your dealer correct the problem easily, getting you back on the road more quickly. One other note on your vehicle's diagnostic system. If the check engine light remains on steadily, your vehicle is telling you it needs service at your earliest convenience and if the check engine light ever flashes while you're driving, that indicates a potentially serious problem that could damage your exhaust system's catalytic converter. Have the car serviced immediately. Although the vehicle is usually drivable and will not require towing, see your dealer as soon as possible. Your vehicle is equipped with one of four Chrysler audio systems and may be equipped with a multiple CD changer option. See your dealer for further details. We'll take the next few minutes to familiarize you with your audio system, beginning with something simple like setting your clock. First, notice that the clock time and radio frequency display both show up on the same window that's built into your radio. The clock time will continuously show in this display window whenever you're driving with radio turned off. With the radio turned on, you can switch between the clock and the radio display by pressing the time button. On some vehicles, the button will be labeled Time Select or Select Push. With the ignition and radio turned on and the clock time displayed, use a pointed object, such as the tip of a ballpoint pen, to press down the small buttons marked H and M. Momentarily pressing down on the buttons adjusts the clock slowly forward by single increments. Holding them down fast forwards the numbers. Once you stop pressing the buttons, the clock will automatically store the time that you've set and normal clock operation will resume. That's all you have to do. The procedure for setting clocks varies slightly with each radio that is found in the LH family of vehicles. So make sure to read your owner's manual for your exact instructions. Your vehicle may be equipped with a mode control button. 
Use this button to cycle the operation mode you desire, AM, FM, tape, or CD changer. A CD or tape may remain in its player while in the radio mode. Your sound system has five or six radio preset buttons located below the display window. Each preset can store up to four radio stations, two FM and two AM. To select your presets, begin by tuning the radio to the desired radio station and pressing the button labeled Set. The words Set 1 will appear in the display window. Then simply select a preset button. To add a second station to the same preset, select a new station and press the Set button twice. The words Set 2 will appear in the display window. Then press the selected preset button within five seconds of pressing the Set button. The speaker balance of your sound system is adjustable. If you have a radio without a joystick, the top knob will be labeled Balance. This knob will move the music in and out of the left and right speakers in accordance with your adjustments. Below that is the Fade button, with the letters F for front and R for rear. Simply move the knob between F and R to adjust the distribution of sound between front and rear. If you have a radio with a joystick, note the markings around the joystick. Moving the joystick between the markings L for left and R for right will move the sound between the left and right speakers. Likewise, moving the joystick between the F and R will move the sound between the front and rear speakers. For tape operation, begin by inserting the cassette tape. The tape will begin playing automatically and a direction arrow will be displayed. The fast forward and rewind arrow keys are located to the right of the cassette player. To fast forward, press the arrow key that faces the same direction as the tape direction indicator. The other button will rewind the tape. To change the tape direction, press the volume power button once. The lighted arrow in the display window will change directions. To eject, press the button above the arrow keys labeled EJT. Your audio system controls may not look like those shown here, but rest assured their functions are essentially the same. To advance the tape, press the Tune button up. To reverse the tape, press the Tune button down. To stop either advancing the tape or reversing the tape, press the Tune button a second time in the same direction as your initial push. To change the direction of the cassette, push the volume button in once. You may have a one-side preset button. This is the button that will change your tape direction. To eject, press the button labeled Eject, Mode Eject, or the symbol on the tape player labeled tape. This button is also marked by a triangle. To operate the compact disc system, begin by turning on the system by pressing the power button. Insert a compact disc and the disc will be accepted by the player. It is possible to search within individual selections or tracks by using the fast reverse and fast forward buttons. If the seat control is tilted up or down, the CD player skips forward or backward to the next selection. If the seat down control is activated within one second after a track begins play, the CD player will skip backward and resume play at the beginning of the previous selection. To eject the CD, use the eject button labeled with a triangle located on the right of the CD opening. Your vehicle is equipped with one of three antenna systems, each designed to deliver crystal clear radio reception. The first is the non-retractable antenna. Located on the right rear panel of the car, this antenna remains stationary at all times. But don't worry, it's strong enough to withstand the forces of nature and the local car wash. Your vehicle may be equipped with a retractable power mast antenna, also located on the right rear panel of the vehicle. This antenna will extend whenever the radio is turned on. This includes the use of the tape or CD player. While this antenna is highly durable, it must be retracted by turning off the radio before the vehicle is taken through an automatic car wash to prevent damage. The third type of antenna is the backlight antenna. This antenna is located in the rear window. The middle of this antenna features an upward sway, making it an ideal place to put a cellular phone antenna. Over the next few minutes, we will provide you with tips for keeping your car looking and running its best. That process begins now when your vehicle is very new, during what is known as the vehicle break-in period. During this period of two or three thousand miles, it is very important that your vehicle be driven sensibly. You should avoid jackrabbit starts and stops, 
apply the brakes sensibly and avoid excessive speeds. It's also normal for your car to use more oil than usual during this break-in period, but as time passes, you will notice a change in oil consumption, improved fuel economy, and the car will simply drive better. The hood release is located on the floor to the left of the driver's seat. To open the hood, reach down and pull up on the lever until the hood releases. Then walk to the front of the car and find the secondary lever underneath the center of the hood. Pull the secondary lever and lift the hood to the full open position. Gas props on either side of the engine compartment will hold the hood open. Obviously, an important part of vehicle maintenance is keeping fluid levels at acceptable operating levels. Many fluid levels can be checked visually. These include washer fluid, coolant antifreeze, and brake fluid. You should ensure that these fluids are between low and full maximum as indicated on the outside of their reservoirs. Checking your oil, power steering, and transmission fluid requires a little more work. Your owner's manual will explain where and how to add these important fluids and also recommends a rigid service schedule for your vehicle, including a schedule for oil changes, tune-ups, and tire maintenance, and reminders of what you can do every day to keep your car running strong, such as using only the grade of fuel that is recommended for your car. It's also important to familiarize yourself with the location and use of your vehicle's emergency equipment prior to an emergency situation. This includes the location of your spare tire and jack. To retrieve the spare tire and jack, open the trunk and turn the black knob located in the center of the trunk and remove the pre-cut board. This board not only conceals the spare and jack, but also contains the instructions for installing the emergency spare. Your vehicle has been engineered to make changing a flat a safe and simple procedure, so please read the instructions carefully before changing a flat tire. Chrome wheels should be cleaned with a soft, clean cloth soaked in mild soap and water, then rinsed. Never use cleaners that contain acid, abrasive metal cleaners, oven cleaner, or an abrasive pad or brush. Avoid car washes that have carbide-tipped brushes. If you must use thinner to remove road tar, immediately wash the area with soap and water. And if you apply chrome polish, buff it off immediately. Some LH vehicles include fog lamps as part of their exterior light system. Fog lamps may only be used when headlights are already turned on. While your fog lamps may not look like these, their operation is the same. First, turn the headlight switch clockwise to the on position. Then, pull the switch to activate the fog lamps. You'll notice that a small green light on the switch will illuminate. Fog lamps will only come on when your headlights are on low beam. Turning on high beam headlights will automatically shut the fog lamps off and they'll return when your headlights have been restored to low beam. It is very important that you refer to your owner's manual to learn how to properly install child seats in your car. There are two different child restraint systems that are generally available. Rearward facing infant carriers for babies up to one year old and weighing less than 20 pounds and forward facing child seats for children older than one year and weighing more than 20 pounds. Be sure to use only the restraint that is correct for your child and remember that you should never place a rearward facing infant carrier in the front seat. Your car may be equipped with an optional Chrysler Integrated Child Safety Seat. Make sure that you carefully read the special operating instructions that should have come with the seat. If you cannot find them, please contact your dealer for a replacement copy. Among your vehicle's most important safety features are the standard driver and passenger airbags, which, along with the seat belts and child restraints, are a part of your total safety system. For instructions regarding the effective use of these features, please refer to the information located on the sun visors and in your owner's manual. Your car may be equipped with the auto stick feature, which provides the convenience of an automatic transmission with the added driver interaction and control of a manual. For fully automatic operation in all four gears, what you're used to from an automatic transmission, Place the shift lever in the overdrive position. 
The instrument cluster will display OD when the transmission is in automatic mode. To obtain the added shift control of auto stick mode at any time while driving, place the shift lever into the AS position. You don't need to lift your foot off the accelerator. The transmission will now remain in the current gear until you adjust it. Pulling the lever toward the driver will trigger a downshift. Pushing it toward the passenger will trigger an upshift. The instrument cluster will display the gear you are currently in with the numbers 1 through 4. There are times when the auto stick's sophisticated electronics will make shift decisions that you haven't requested for convenience, durability, or to enhance your driving control. For example, auto stick will automatically downshift to first gear when the vehicle is stopped. Auto stick will also let you start out in first, second, or third gear. Starting in second or third can be helpful during snowy or icy conditions. Fourth gear is available only at speeds of 17 miles per hour and higher. Auto stick may downshift from fourth to third under certain conditions to ensure good performance. Auto stick will automatically upshift when engine speed reaches 6300 RPM to protect against overspeeding the engine. For the same reason, auto stick will ignore downshifts into second or first gear that would overspeed the engine. Electronic speed control can be used whenever auto stick is in third or fourth gear. Speed control will deactivate if first or second gear is selected. Finally, auto stick will default to the automatic mode to prevent the powertrain from overheating or if a malfunction occurs. When the transmission is in auto stick mode, you control your shift patterns, so some of your shifts may feel different than what you're used to from automatic mode. Your car's engine computer monitors a number of sensors to ensure that the engine is running at optimum efficiency and is producing the lowest exhaust emissions. If your car is equipped with a power sunroof, there are a few things you should know about its operation before you set out to enjoy the open-air driving experience. There are three controls for your sunroof, each located in the overhead console. They are open, close, and vent. To open the sunroof, slide the cover back until you can see the tinted glass. Then press the open button and the glass will slide back. Releasing the button at any time will stop the glass. To pop the glass up above the car, press the vent button. This will create a refreshing airflow throughout the cabin without completely opening the sunroof. To close the sunroof, simply press the close button and the glass will slide shut. Then slide the cover back in place to complete the process. Your new car features a number of outstanding technical innovations, each designed to improve the comfort and convenience of your new vehicle. Among these innovations is the HomeLink system, a universal programmable transmitter which emulates the signal of your garage door transmitter. In fact, this system provides three controls, each of which may be programmed to operate a garage door opener, a state gate or home lighting, or a security system. Before programming your home link transmitter, check to see that all persons and equipment are clear of the garage door or power operated gates. To operate the system, locate the three buttons on the sun visor. Hold the end of your handheld transmitter against the bottom surface of the home link transmitter so that you can still see the red light. Using both hands, push and hold both the handheld transmitter button and the home link button you wish to program. Continue to hold both buttons down until you see the red light on the home link transmitter flash. First slowly, then rapidly. This could take up to a minute or more, so keep holding the buttons. After the light starts to flash rapidly, you may release the buttons. That rapid flash means that the home link transmitter has been successfully trained to match the signal of your handheld transmitter. You can now use HomeLink instead of your handheld transmitter by simply pressing the trained button. You may now train the other two buttons to perform different tasks, to open either another garage door or gate, or with an available auxiliary kit, to activate a home lighting or security system. To erase any previously trained frequencies, simply hold down buttons 1 and 3 until the red light begins to flash. This will erase all channels and allow you to retrain each one as desired. If you have further questions about the HomeLink system, consult the owner's manual or call 1-800-355-3515 24-7.
24 hours a day, seven days a week, to speak to a technical assistance representative. Now that you've had a chance to learn more about your vehicle's special features and technology, you're ready to enjoy your car on the road. But remember, this has just been an introduction to some of your car's more popular features. Reading your owner's manual carefully is the real key to understanding your vehicle. Once again, welcome to the exclusive family of LH vehicles. And remember, be sure to always buckle up.